Hello? Hello? Are we on? Yes? Okay. Hello and welcome to our new video. It's about registration and display devices. Okay. Last time we talked about we talked about uh, sensors and amplifiers and so on. And this time we talk about the other end of the chain. Now we want to display or or register whatever we measure. Yeah. One display device I think all of you know. Yeah? Something like this. Analog display. This one actually is from my from my heating. Yeah? I hope at least it's still working. <laughs> You can see the pointer, you can see the scale, everything looks fine. Yeah. There are tremendous, tremendous benefits from such display. The biggest benefit is, the biggest benefit is that even from far away, like now, yeah, for you it's for you it's very far away. Yeah, but maybe you cannot read the the numbers, yeah, but you can see the pointer. You can see in which direction the pointer is pointing. Okay, this means even you are at the other end of the hall, you have a look on your on your measurement wall where they, all the measurement devices are built in. Yeah, usually usually they are mounted in a cabinet or something like this cabinet door. They are usually 58 by 58 millimeters large. Yeah, so five by five centimeters roughly, or twice as much or a rectangular a square whatever this is the typical typical measured size of it yeah and even if you stand at the other end of the wall you can see in which direction this pointer is showing yeah and you can maybe you're not sure if it's pointing to 22 or 23 degrees celsius in this case <sighs> But it does not really matter. Often it does not really matter. And often the typical the typical built-in cases of such things are that the standard the standard uh, or nominal behavior if of the machine is pretty much in the middle. Yeah? And if you have a look, see all the pointers showing the middle of the scale, you know. The machine is operating within normal parameters. Yeah. So that's the a real benefit. And also you can see if the measurement is stable or not. And if it's not stable, then maybe the pointer is jigging a little bit, but you can still read it. You can still read it. Yeah, you can guess around a certain direction. And you can also see if it's moving slow or it's moving fast. Yeah? You can see the trend very, very easily in such pointing devices. Analog devices. Disadvantage is if you want, there's friction inside and so on, if you want to have this very accurate, it's getting expensive. Okay. Also disadvantage is, you know it from your car, if you look like you should look from the top, yeah, then you see the real measurement. But if you maybe you're going too fast in your car, then you lean a little bit forward and it looks like you're not going too fast, yeah, because the the pointer has a little bit uh, distance to the scale. So there's a parallax, this is called. Yeah. Maybe I can show you. See if this is working. Yeah. Now you measure 24, not almost 28 degrees. Yeah, it's going up because I hold it now. And now it's getting too hot for me. So I tilt it. You see? Now it's only 26. Nice. Huh? So it's difficult to read it. Okay. There are room for errors with this. Another possible display technology we know already. Analog, okay? And this is digital. In this case, this is my digital multimeter. Okay? Wipe off the, the 
dust. Ah, now it's looking perfect. Turn it on. Here is the number. Yeah, we turn on the light. Here is the number 0 0.0003 and it's regardless if I tilt it, shift it or whatever, yeah, it will show, it will show exactly the number. So we do, we cannot make a wrong reading from it. Yeah? Maybe it's not accurate itself, but the display is accurate. Yeah? However, it's a pretty difficult you see if if something is changing i'm touching now i'm touching now the wires and just throw them around we cannot see exactly yeah is this now a trend is this moving to somewhere or is it just shaking that's difficult for us that's on the analog signal on an analog display it's much easier to show to 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 watch this yeah let's measure let's measure my resistance 280, 90, 300, yeah. 350, 360, 370, 380. Is this climbing now fast or what is this? Yeah. 370. Now it's switching even between between uh, mega ohm and kilo ohm. So you see, it's not that easy. Yeah. It's not that easy. The sizes of such built-in, they are also built-in, like analog signals, are also 40, 48 by 48 millimeters. Yeah. What is difficult for us? I cannot, there is no middle of the scale, right? There's just a number. So I really have to go there and see what it's showing me. And then I have, I cannot intuitively, I cannot see, is it cold, is it hot, is it warm? I have to read the number and then categorize it by myself. So it needs more effort for me. But I can measure with a little bit more accuracy. Okay. Also, trends cannot be cannot be shown as well as before. Now I show you something with this device. I'm not sure if you have already noticed, but probably, probably not. Yeah, probably not. Therefore, I will need a real measurement. I will need a real measurement. I will simply use voltage and I will take again my, my 24 volt thing here and measure. Mm -hmm. Now the battery is empty. 24.6 volts. Okay. I have to use these two screws. Getting better. 24.7 volts. And what I actually want to try, what I want to show you, what I want to show you is underneath underneath the value you can see there is a, a, a dotted stripe yeah and it's about in the middle yeah and this is this 24 volt we we can up go we can go up to 40 volts because it's a 40,000 count thing 40,000 yeah 40 and we're about in the middle at 24 24 is around the middle of 40 okay we can see it in this in this scale so this somehow tries to look like an analog display okay it's a quasi analog display and this should help from the other end of the room to show to show the trend yeah or to show a range or an area where we are in yeah so this is here on my on my a multimeter I think you have not noticed it before if I go away you see also this is now zero yeah. again I added and here we are 24 again 
Yeah? You cannot read exactly. Yeah? For exact number you have it above, but you can guess the size a little bit. Yeah? So this would help in this case uh, to combine somehow the benefits of a digital display, no issue when reading, yeah? with the benefits of an analog display to immediately see the range where we are, yeah? or the area where we are. Quasi analog display. This, these are it for the display devices. Okay, this way. You here you have these three, the three analog, digital, and quasi analog display. Okay. What is missing is registration devices. Okay, registration device. Registration device means I do not just want to display my value. I also want to record it. Okay. I also want to record it. One, one typical registration device is this line writer. Line writer. Yeah. You have probably seen it. There is a strip of paper. Yeah. There is a strip of paper. And this strip of paper contains a line. A line, one line, reflecting the history, the history of the of the measured value. Yeah. Here we have some point in time. Here we have some later point in time. Here we have some later point in time. Here we have some later point in time. At somewhere where the pointer, actually, it is a pen. Where the pen hits the paper, this is now. Okay. And it's just feeding forward, feeding forward, feeding forward, feeding forward. And that's it. Yeah. So I will now try to... There's somewhere the paper roll. Yeah. There's somewhere the paper roll. Here we got our measurement. And here we got the pen writing this measurement. Yeah. The pen is moved in this direction by them, like like on a display. Yeah. And the paper is the paper is forwarded yeah, at a constant speed rate. Yeah. There is a velocity here. Yeah. And then we see the history, the trend of this of this pen, of this writing, yeah? So there is, there is maybe something like an amplifier, which provides the movement of the pen. Yeah? And then there is, of course, like before, like before, there is the measurement device or the, 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 the send, there's a measurement amplifier, yeah? And then, of course, there is somewhere the sensor, and the, and so the sensor influences gives its data to the measurement amplifier. The measurement amplifier puts it to the right amplifier, so the right amplifier then controls the position of the of the pen, and the pen is moving across the surface of the surface of the. Uh, paper and the paper has here some rolls and they will feed the paper forward. Okay, can be a lot of a lot of paper speeds. Yeah, up to uh, seven meters, seven meters per second, uh, pretty fast, <laughs> max. Uh, seven, seven meters per second maximum. Or maybe it's just 20 millimeters per second. This is the typical range. It's the typical range. Okay. If I have one channel, I think it's obvious what is happening. Yeah? If I have two channels, oh no. make here a little extra piece of paper. Yeah? If I have two channels, I can 
either either substitute the paper in two areas if I have two channels two areas one is for this one measurement yeah there is one one area dedicated here is the maximum value here is the minimum value of this one of this one measurement yeah and then maybe I have a, a, another measurement it goes from here max to here max yeah? and there the other curve will be inside okay then I have two pens one band is located one band is located here one pen is located here we are at the same at the same point in time with both bands so I only have to have here a minimum distance that my two pens do not crash into each other okay. another option yeah the disadvantage is if there is only two okay then I have half the resolution but if there are more channels yeah, then I cannot just divide the paper into small parts yeah then I would just see straight lines this is usually this is not done usually we're using the whole paper for two signals yeah, so that the second signal also is recorded over then maybe they have different scales yeah but then there is a second pen yeah and this second pen because they maybe need to cross each other yeah so I need to have here a distance yeah. and this distance here because the paper speed means point in time this means this pen here needs to write the what is actually happening a little bit later than this pen exactly this time later function of the speed okay because it's located later on the paper it needs to print later it needs to move later yeah so there needs to be some kind of buffer it needs to be some kind of buffer buffering the measured information okay that's a line writer was used very very often uh, because trends do show much more you have much more feeling for what you measure than just see a number okay especially on commissioning issues or everybody everybody knows in movies those lines yeah the magnitude of an earthquake I don't know it was an undersea earthquake it will crack yeah every skyscraper in Silicon Valley will fall down and, and flood and whatever and then you always see some lines yeah seismic things very usual that they walk this that they work this way yeah. line writer still still in use yeah. it's not ancient of course it's also ancient technology but it's also still still in use Ooh. Ooh, grab the paper heads grab the paper yeah line writers there are maybe different yeah maybe if you want to really feed the paper yeah then it's just in some sort of lab then it's called a lab writer because then you cannot just record I don't know a technological process with seven meters per second then you would need piles and piles and piles of paper this is not possible yeah. if you want to record a process then you need a process writer yeah? process writer then you have usually low feed forwards yeah? then it records longer period on the same area okay so line writer usually very expensive usually very expensive then they said Phew, okay uh, we need these pens and so on uh, what if I don't need this that accurate yeah. then there was the point writers invented the point writers they consist consists of some like a typewriter like a typewriter I don't I'm not sure if you know a typewriter <laughs> what a typewriter was or is yeah it can print symbols yeah 
a typewriter can print letters, yeah, numbers. Yeah, looks a little bit like a keyboard, yeah, but it will point point uh, a symbol. It will draw a symbol on a sheet of paper. Yeah, and this exactly I can use here also. Yeah, then for instance, I take this green, this green now. Mm, how do I do it? I make it like this. Yeah. Make it point writer or point recorder. Punkt drucker. Point printer. Then it will just print at some point in time here, let's say an X. At some later point in time it will print here an X. At some later point in time it will print here an X. Yeah? So I will not have a line like the fat one. I will just have a series of symbols representing, representing my, my line, my history. Yeah? If this is moving fairly slow, yeah, this is okay. Disadvantages, I do not know what happened between the symbols. Yeah? It's this one I don't know. Yeah? But I do not have this issue with storing, because then I just switch to another symbol, let's say an O, and I make this symbol, and afterwards I make here this symbol. I make this symbol, afterwards I make here this symbol. I make this symbol, and afterwards I make here this symbol. Yeah? yeah. So I have a series of X's, which is one. I have a series of O, maybe even in another color. It's also possible that it changes colors in between. And then I do not have to deal with this, with this distance. Yeah? It was much cheaper. Like I said, disadvantage, disadvantage is uh, that I do not know what is happening between two recorded, recorded points. Okay. Sometimes it's even enough to, to do not record, uh, do not record the value, just record if it's getting not normal. Yeah? So that maybe you have here a maximum value somewhere, yeah? let's say maximum value for the orange one, then you could record here at this point value smaller than max. Value was, was getting smaller than maximum. Yeah? And maybe you have here a minimum value. Yeah? Here a minimum value. Then you could record here yeah, smaller mean and record here greater mean. Yeah, and if you do it, if you do it like this, yeah, then this is called an alarm printer. Okay, alarm printer, alarm writer. Recorder, alarm printer, alarm recorder. This only. This will not print really a line. It was just a written line. Value, temperature value X is below maximum value. Temperature value X is below minimum value. Alarm. Be temperature value X is above minimum value. Everything is fine again. Okay? Just line by line by line what happened synchronously. Alarm printer, alarm writer. These things are really ancient now. Yeah. Why I'm telling you this? Why I'm still telling you this? Yeah. Because nowadays we do pretty much the same things in PCs. Yeah. We do not have paper anymore. We do have a database. Yeah. We do have a database. And inside this database we record point by point the values. Yeah. We do have pretty much the same, is the same issue, unlike on a point recorder, point printer, that we do not know what happened between two recorded values. We do not exactly know. There are techniques about this, where we, there is triggering uh, events and so on, but actually we do not know. If there are two values stored in the database, 
what happened between, we cannot really tell out of the database anymore. We can just guess. So it pretty much works like a point recorder, but with a much more much much more frequency. So depending where this archive is, it may be values which are coming in every tenth of a second, or maybe values which come in every cycle, every cycle of the PLC, or maybe all two seconds or something like this, depending if it's a long-term record or a short-term record, because if you really record every, I don't know, 20 milliseconds or every cycle of the PLC, yeah, one value for each channel, then you would also fill the drives. Yeah? No issue there. And usually there are techniques then that you record a short period very frequent, yeah? and then you take the short period, take somewhere an average value, and there are some algorithms involved, put them in a long-term, long-term database. So, and then you can watch it on the screen and it looks like, it looks like a line writing thing. Yeah? You can select which values you want to, do, to use and it looks like this is what I draw here. Yeah? This is actually why I showed you this, yeah? because this is what the origin was. So it looks like a line writer, it has the issues with a point recorder, yeah, but not that severe because it's recording more often. Yeah? And there is of course the functionality of a LAMP print and a LAMP writer as well. So if there's a separate database, if some value is leaving the proposed or the, 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 the Solbert, Solbereich, yeah, the wanted area, yeah? it's going to an alarm area yeah or usually there are two values one is the warning area and one is the alert area yeah one is yellow yeah alert yellow and one is alert red yeah. usually warning means ah, there might be something and alert means there is something there's for sure something look at this okay but these things are stored in a database and it looks like exactly like an alarm printer it's uh, chronoslo chronologically 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 saved in this database and you can watch it and usually it's not just alarms usually there are also operational messages like cooling pump started or whatever cooling pump stopped and and so on there are not only alarm messages yeah? there are also operational messages which show what actions was, were taken and this is then chronologically shown, shown on some screen. This is usually how it is done today. So this was it for this video. We talked about these things here. Yeah. Talked about display devices, analog displays, digital displays, digital displays, uh, and a quasi and a digital displays. We talked now about those things, yeah. Recording, recording devices, line writer, point recorder, line printer, and based on this, I explained you how it was done. Is it done today? It's just in the PC on some database, but basically, that's it. Okay, so that's it for the theory of measurement technique. Next video or next videos there will be quite a few still yeah we're really talking about how to measure this and how to measure that okay for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye